So, anyone who's babysat children for longer than 15 minutes knows that adulthood is a destination these kids can't get to fast enough. Adulthood is where you learn to not physically attack someone because they burned your bagel bites. So, to the delight of scholars and babysitters everywhere, my study of William Golding's Lord of the Flies through the lens of Sigmund Freud seeks to prove that it is actually unsuppressed childish tendencies that bring about destruction in society, not a loss of innocence usually associated with adulthood. So my research is based on the idea of the anti-human, which was established by Immanuel Kant in the late 18th century. He said that enlightenment was man's emergence from his own self-incured immaturity, which basically means that humans aren't as great as they thought they were. Then came Sigmund Freud, and his work took it a step further. Humans were driven by instincts or by urges, and they were made out to be something more akin to an animal than a human. And while dropping Freud's name today probably won't win you a lot of points, using his work in conjunction with Golding's actually makes a lot of sense. Freud was still a very big contender in the realm of the human psyche when Golding was publishing, making their work compatible, if not necessarily contemporary. So, where do we find Sigmund on the island in Lord of the Flies? One of the first instances is found in the way the boys revel in being dirty, which is one of the first stages of sexual development, according to Freud. In one scene, Ralph, the leader of the boys, tries to tell the others where the lavatory should be, but they ignore him. They laugh at his insistence, even though they're old enough to know the consequences of their literal dirty habits. And then in another scene, after the boys have killed the sow, they cover themselves in her blood, but it's more for sport than for sustenance. Another element of a Freudian society is what he calls sublimation, things like art or music, usually produced by adults once they realize that society can't fun function based on instinct alone. The boys attempt something like this. They cover themselves in war paint, but when they do it, it's for selfish reasons, to hide themselves as they hunt first the animals on the island and then each other. And this, combined with their lack of a desire to keep clean, makes it so they can't run a functional society. Now, the functional society for Freud is based on the idea of the adult, or the suppression of childish tendencies, which is evident in the character of Piggy. He, before he's murdered by the rest of the boys, asks them, what are the grown-ups going to think? Which suggests that society has to be based on adult measures. However, in this instance, childhood wins out over adulthood, and Piggy is pushed to his death by the rest of the boys. And this makes up the bulk of my research. The focus on cleanliness, sublimation, and adult-imposed order as the hallmarks of society, which evidently children threaten, at least in Lord of the Flies. But now we have to ask ourselves, what role does the anti-human play in the humanities? Isn't this exactly what we decided not to study when we came to BYU? Well, that's not exactly it. See, if we really seek to understand the human experience, we've got to start at the very beginning, a childhood, rather than just looking at the products of adults. As we do so, we're going to get a non-biased look at what it means to be a human, figure out why kids are so obsessed with bagel bites, or maybe more realistically, what it really means to be a human, to see the darkness of man's heart. Thank you.